Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to make dubstep in the style of when. Before I start, please do like and subscribe and I have preset and sample packs available in the description. I'll put some free stuff for this tutorial down there too, but if you want the full project, it's available on my Bandcamp, which is in the description as well. Let's start. Our BPM is 136, which is ideal for this type of dubstep influenced bass music. The key I'm using is E Phrygian dominant, but I'm only using two notes throughout E and F, and we're working with an eight bar loop. I've got a few different groups and or buses throughout the project, and I'm going to look at the individual channels and subgroups first, then the buses. Here's the kick. It's weighty and punchy. We have an EQ to remove unwanted low, boomy and high frequencies. I've ensured the kick is tuned to a note from Ephrygian dominant and it's tuned to an A, the fourth note of the scale. We have a clap from my drum machine sample pack layered with a rim shot hitting on the fourth beat of every bar. The clap adds attack and bite, which helps the sounds cut through the mix. I've also got this dubby rim shot, which is the same sample as the ordinary rim shot, but with some echo applied on 30 second notes with high feedback and 100% wet. I've used the wobble in the character tab to give the echo more of a sense of movement, although this is very subtle. I've done a fade in in simpler because I wanted to tame the transient. And we have high pass the sound since I didn't want the echo to interfere with the low mids of the main rim shot. For the rim group, We have drum bus to fatten things up and damp down the high ends added by the clap and some EQ to take out the lows from the rim shot and irritating frequency and to add a little bit of the top end back. Next. We have this clap I've used for fills. I haven't processed this at all as it's from my sample pack. It just plays a couple of 16th notes at the end of every fourth bar. We can listen in the mix. We have the hat rack. This rack contains two shakers and an open hi-hat. All the samples are on one voice. And if we reveal the IO, we can see they're all in the same choke group. This is not something you have to do, but the style has tight, minimal drums, which the choking helps with. I panned the samples to either the left or the right to add width. We have some saturation and drum bus for character and warmth and an EQ to remove unnecessary low frequencies, which drum bus creates. We can have a look at the MIDI as well. We have these two different laser sounds.
They both have a saturator applied to add grittiness and have similar chains utilizing echoes with different settings. I've got at least five different echoes or delays in this project and Wen seems to use multiple echoes with different note divisions. The result is a diverse and dynamic range of effects. This technique was something I was going to showcase in my Khan and Neek video, but I think it's even more essential to Wen style. So for example, you can see that this laser, laser two, is one over eight, whereas laser one is one over 16. You may notice a metallic quality that these lasers have. This is because I've stretched them using the texture algorithm after hearing similarly textured lasers in the track commotion. I've used the pitch envelope in the controls to help achieve this effect. Both lasers have been panned slightly to opposite sides. Before we move on to the drums bus processing, you may have noticed that all the drums in the bus have this two-step groove applied to them. So if I solo the drums bus, select them all. Turn it off. Turn it on. You can hear the sense of swing that the groove adds. Now for the bus, usually I'd apply multiple chains of processing here. However, I'm focusing on composition and vibe. So we just have some subtle drum bus to glue everything together and some EQ3 to remove unnecessary low frequencies. We have some signal being sent to send A, which has some EQ and my favorite empty club preset to help the drums feel like they're in a physical space. As mentioned, only two notes are being played by all the synths, either an E or an F. The first bass is this sine wave FM bass. Which I made in Serum, and I'll make this available for free in the description. It uses a combination of FM and subtractive synthesis. You can see the FM from B knob with oscillator A at minus two octaves and oscillator B at zero octaves. LFO1 is modulating both the FM from B knob and the filter cutoff, which helps give the patch a sense of movement, as does the unison detune. I tried to make similar patches with square waves, but when seems to favor these deeper sine FM bases from what I can gather. We have my standard sine wave sub EQ3 splitting multiband processing technique, which I will link a more in-depth tutorial explaining on the screen now. I also have this filter because I wanted to make the sound deeper. The next bass we have is an identical patch, but we have this filter even lower. Just a note with these, I've used some overdrive on the mid band just to bring out some of the mid range frequencies a little. For this 808, which I made using operator. It's like the 808 in my Sahis video, but with more dramatic pitch modulation and some minor changes to the amp envelope. Both the sub and top layers are single sine waves. The difference with the top is that the filter and the filter drive is creating harmonics. And we have some spread applied, which pans two detuned voices left and right. I've then added a mono utility, so the 808 is fully mono compatible. Then we have some saturation too. I'm keeping things simple on the bass bus. Some EQ to filter out extreme lows and this sub sidechain rack. 
which allows me to sidechain just the lows. This rack will also be available in the description. I'll just play all the bases together. We can see there's some of the signal sent to reverb on send A, as we had with the drums. Moving on to the effects, we have a few impacts, some breathy effects, a cymbal reverse, and a vocal. I made the breath impact and the perk impact from some breaths I recorded. The breath impact has been time stretched to achieve a metallic effect. Although I chose the complex algorithm as opposed to texture, which I usually use for this type of time stretching. We have some chorus for width and some reverb on the channel for added sustain. For the perk impact, we have some very mild bit crushing and some very heavy saturation. This kind of processing can add a lot of nasty top end, so I've used a filter to remove these frequencies. I may have done this regardless of the processing, as it's a way to make elements sound further back in the mix, which is what I wanted from this sound. Next, we have this brief breath, which is a chop of the breath impact taken down almost two octaves with identical plugins and settings to the breath impact. We have this simple symbol reverse, which has the same processing as the previous channel, chorus and reverb. And finally, this vocal drop at the end of the eight bar loop, yeah, yeah, which is yeah. me saying, yeah. And I've shifted this down three semitones, applied a filter to make it a little bit deeper and some chorus for texture and width. On the FX bus, we just have some EQ to remove any unnecessary low frequencies that might interfere with the kick or the bass. And we have some reverb applied on send A and some quarter note delay applied via send C. In terms of the melodic stuff, we can start with this creepy FM pad. We've got a heavily unisoned sine wave being FM'd by an identical oscillator. There's some pitch modulation. You can see it says master tuning here, which LFO one slowly introduces. And then we have the filter cutoff being modulated by LFO2. I'm using bit crushing and saturation to add some grit to the sound. And we have a utility making this sound more monocompatible by decreasing its width. For the MIDI, you can see it's more E's and F's, in this case, played together to create dissonance. We've got this creepy ESCII pad, which is like the previous patch, but with square waves instead of using sine waves and FM synthesis. We have the same effects chain as the previous pad, and it's just playing an E at the end of every four bars. Then we have a couple of different drones. The first is an ambient piano sample, which I made with some reverb on a single sustained note, resampled and stretched. The original note happened to be an E. I've messed around with the ADSR, in simpler so that the sound fades in and we have a very similar effects chain to the previous two pads. However, we have an auto filter at the end of the chain. 
which if you remove the drone feels a lot more static. We have a bit of drive on the filter here as well. We have this polar drone. which is a serum stock noise, which happens to be in E. And then what we have afterwards is this saturator, which is also boosting the level significantly. For the melody bus, We have some bass mono to make sure the lower frequencies are mono compatible all the way up to 500 Hertz. Some EQ, which gets rid of unnecessary low frequencies and harsh high ends. Created by the bit crushing. And finally, some chorus to add more movement. I'll just turn everything off. And back on. The bus is being sent to send A, reverb, and send B, a dotted note delay. And that's it. As I said, the full project is available on my Bandcamp. If you have any questions about this video or requests for future videos, then please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.